Hi, and welcome to Oil for the Journey. We are following along with the Bridges for Peace, Ignite the Truth Bible Reading Plan. My name is Tony Turner, and I'll be your journey reader for today. The reading for today is Deuteronomy chapters 18 through 21. I'll be reading from the NIV version. These three chapters are describing the Lord's instructions for how the Israelites were to possess the land that he promised to give them. In chapter 18, we're going to read about the leadership, which basically consisted of the religious leaders, the Levites, the priests, and the prophets, um, how they would be uh, given space to live and, and provided for uh, in order to sustain their lives. Uh, chapter 19 upholds the sanctity of life. We'll hear about the roots of humanitarianism and as certain parts of the land were to be set aside for asylum for refugees awaiting any kind of judgment. Uh, we hear language today about refugees, but it's already written in the scripture about how that's supposed to go according to the Lord. Chapter 20, there's going to be some interesting elements pertaining to leadership according to his plan. Uh, pertaining to war and issues uh, concerning the surrounding areas. Uh, they were to live strictly by the Lord's stipulation. And then in chapter 21, there are standards given for family and community living. So listen out for those things. Let's we'll start with Deuteronomy chapter 18. The Levitical priests, indeed the whole tribe of Levi, are to have no allotment or inheritance with Israel. They shall live on the food offerings presented to the Lord, for that is their inheritance. They shall have no inheritance among their fellow Israelites. The Lord is their inheritance as he promised them. This is the share due the priests from the people who sacrificed a bull or a sheep, the shoulder, the internal organs, and the meat from the head. You are to give them the first fruits of your grain, new wine, and olive oil, and the first wool from the shearing of your sheep. For the Lord your God has chosen them and their descendants out of all your tribes to stand and minister in the Lord's name always. If a Levite moves from one of your towns anywhere in Israel where he is living and comes in all earnestness to the place the Lord will choose, he may minister in the name of the Lord, his God, like, a, like all his fellow Levites who serve there in the presence of the Lord. He is to share equally in their benefits, even though he has received money from the sale of family possessions. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their daughter or their son in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord because of these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. The nations you will dispossess, listen to those who practice sorcery or divination. But as for you, the Lord your God has not permitted you to do so. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him, for this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, or we will die. The Lord said to me, what they said is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow, fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that a prophet speaks in my name. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded 
or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods is to be put to death. You may say to yourselves, how can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? If what a prophet claims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken presumptuously, so do not be alarmed. Chapter 19. When the Lord your God has destroyed the nation whose land he has given you, and when you have driven them out and settled in their towns and houses, then set aside for yourselves three cities in the land your Lord, the Lord your God has given you to possess. Determine the distances involved and divide into three parts the land you, the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance, so that a person who kills someone may flee for refuge to one of these cities. This is the rule concerning anyone who kills a person and flees for safety. Anyone who kills a neighbor unintentionally without malice of forethought. For this instance, a man may go, this for instance, a man may go into the forest with his neighbor to cut wood. And as he swings his ax to fell a tree, the head may fall off and hit his neighbor and kill him. That man may flee to one of these cities and save his life. Otherwise, the avenger of blood might pursue him in a rage. Overtake him if the distance is too great and kill him even though he is not deserving of death. Since he did it to his neighbor without malice of forethought, this is why I command you to set aside for yourselves three cities. If the Lord your God enlarges your territory as he promised an oath to your ancestors and gives you the whole land he promised them, because you carefully follow these laws I command you today to love the Lord your God and to walk in obedience to him, then you are to set aside three more cities. Do this so that the innocent blood will not be shed on your land, which the Lord your God has given you as your inheritance, and so that, and so that you will not be guilty of bloodshed. But if out of hate, someone lies in wait, assaults, and kills a neighbor, then flees to one of these cities, the killer shall be sent for by the town elders, be brought back from the city, and be handed over to the avenger of blood to die. Show no pity. You must purge from Israel the guilt of shedding innocent blood so that it may go well with you. Do not move your neighbor's boundary stone and set up your predecessors in the inheritance you receive in the land the Lord your God has given you to possess. One witness is enough to convict anyone accused of a crime or of any crime or offense they may have committed. A matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. I'm sorry, one witness is not enough. It must be two or three witnesses. If a malicious witness takes the stand to accuse someone of a crime, the two people involved in the dispute must stand in the presence of the Lord before the priests and the judges who are in office at the time. The judges must make a thorough investigation. And if the witness proves to be a liar, giving false testimony against a fellow Israelite, then do, the do to the false witness as the witness intended to do to the other party. You must purge the evil from among you. The rest of the people will hear of this and be afraid and never again will such an evil thing be done among them. Show no pity, life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, and foot for foot. Chapter 20. When you go to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army greater than yours, do not be afraid of them because the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, with, will be with you. When you are about to go into battle, the priest shall come forward and address the army. He shall say, Hear, Israel, today you are going into battle against your enemies. 
Do not be faint-hearted or afraid or be terrified of them for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give victory. The officers shall say to the army, has anyone built a new house and not yet begun to live in it? Let him go home or he may die in battle and someone else may begin to live in it. Has anyone planted a vineyard and not begun to enjoy it? Let him go home or he may die in battle and someone else enjoy it. Has anyone become pledged to a woman and not married her? Let him go home or he may die in battle and someone else marry her. Then the officer sh shall add, is anyone afraid or faint-hearted? Let him go home so that his fellow soldiers will not become disheartened too. When the officers have finished speaking to the army, they shall appoint commanders over it. When you march up to attack a city, make its people an offer of peace. If they accept and open their gates, all the people in it shall be subject to forced labor and shall work for you. If they refuse to make peace and they engage you in battle, lay siege to that city. When the Lord your God delivers it into your hand, put the sword, put to the sword all the men in it. As for the women, the children, the livestock, and everything else in the city, you may take these as plunder for yourselves. And you may use the plunder the Lord your God gives you from your enemies. This is how you are to treat all the cities that are at a distance from you and do not belong to the nations nearby. However, in the cities of the nations the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, do not leave alive anything that breathes. Completely destroy them, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Otherwise, they will teach you to follow the detestable things they do in worshiping their gods and you will sin against the Lord your God. When you lay siege to a city for a long time, fighting against it to capture it, do not destroy its trees by putting an ax to them because you can eat their fruit. Do not cut them down. Are the trees people that you should besiege them? However, you may cut down the trees that you know are not fruit trees and use them to build siege works until the city at war with you falls. Chapter 21. If someone is found slain, lying in a field in the land the Lord your God is giving you to possess, and it is not known who the killer was, your elders and judges shall go out and measure the distance from the body to the neighboring towns. Then the elders of the town nearest the body shall take a heifer that has never been worked and has never worn a yoke and lead it down to a valley that has not been plowed or planted and where there is a flowing stream. There in the valley they are to break the heifer's neck. The Levitical priest shall step forward for the Lord your God has chosen them to minister and to pronounce blessings in the name of the Lord and to decide all cases of dispute and assault. Then all the elders of the nearest of the town nearest the body shall wash their hands over the heifer whose neck was broken in the valley. And they shall declare, our hands did not shed this blood, nor did our eyes see it done. Accept this atonement for your people, Israel, whom you have redeemed, Lord, and do not Hold your people guilty of the blood of an innocent person. Then the bloodshed will be atoned for, and you will have purged from yourselves the guilt of shedding innocent blood, since you have done what is right in the eyes of the Lord. When you go to war against your enemies, and the Lord your God delivers them into your hands, and you take captives, if you notice among the captives a beautiful woman and are attracted to her, you may take her as your wife. Bring her into your home and have her shave her head, trim her nails, and put aside the clothes she was wearing when captured. 
after she has lived in your house and mourned her father and mother for a full month, then you may go to her and be her husband, and she shall be your wife. If you are not pleased with her, let her go wherever she wishes. You must not sell her or treat her as a slave, since you have dishonored her. If a man has two wives and he loves but one, one but not the other, and both bear him sons, but the firstborn is the son of the wife he does not love, when he wills his property to his sons, he must not give the rights of the firstborn to the son of the wife he loves in preference to his actual firstborn, the son of the wife he does not love. He must acknowledge the son of his unloved wife as the firstborn by giving him a double share of all he has. That son is the first sign of his father's strength. The right of the firstborn belongs to him. If someone has a stubborn and rebellious son who does not obey his father and mother and will not listen to them when they discipline him, his father and mother shall take hold of him and bring him to the elders at the gate of the town. They shall say to the elders, this son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men of this town are to stone him to death. You must purge the evil from among you. All Israel will hear of it and be afraid. If someone guilty of a capital offense is put to death and their body is exposed on a pole, you must not leave the body hanging on the pole overnight. Be sure to bury it that same day because anyone who is hung on a pole is under God's curse. You must not desecrate the land the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance. I used to think these words in Deuteronomy were just like hard words, you know, just your your kid is, is uh, rebellious, so you stone him to death. But what the Lord was looking out for was the fact that he would not spread that rebellion to others because he wanted peace in the community. And to be sure, I'm, I'm sure if that kind of stuff were to happen today, which thank God it's not, but if that kind of stuff were to happen today, it would probably only have to happen one time and a lot of kids would fall in line. <laughs> but um, the, the truth is, is I, I see two, two other things. I see that first of all, God's jealousy over us has to do really with our peace and our safety and ultimately for our joy. He wants us to put him first and wants even those who lead us, whether in the religious community or the secular community, to be led only by him because he ultimately is the one that knows what's best for us. He's the one that loves us best. So it's interesting later on, we'll hear about the, the judges and the kings. Even when they had a king, that king was to write out his own copy of the scrolls his own copy of the rules and regs so that and and then read it every day so that the people were still ultimately accountable to god he wants us secondly to see him as a promise keeper not only were the israelites chosen by him for him to love protect and provide for because of, not just because of who they were but he also showed mercy on those who would follow him because of them. So that, that includes us. He is concerned about our joy, our, our peace, and our provision. So at every opportunity that you get to make a decision, always remember to put him first. And you too will experience the fulfillment of his promises. <music>